And as with the last video, it looks like we're going to get Indy accompanying us. So, this is the Rose Arbor several years later. Um, as you can see, the roses have crept into the almond trees. The almond trees, by the way, are a lot bigger than they used to be. Uh, you can actually see them towering over the house. This is probably about as tall as they're ever going to get. But it looks like they're still expanding in width. It is starting to look like a um, I should add that this is May of 2022. And the last time we did the videos, I think five or six years ago. We have several About videos. five or six years, yes. These are the antique roses. The last time we did the video, they were like maybe a year old. Now they're all over the place. This is a new rose. Um, this is Maiden's Blush. It's one of my medieval roses. Documented, uh, I, think, I think from like 1400s. Ooh. And the other medieval rose I have in the, in the bower. Well, in the, this is the apothecary rose, which is actually grown primarily for its hips. This is from like the 1300s, at least. It's almost as, as, uh, as old as the Eglantine. This is a more uh, modern rose. This one is Generous Gardener. I planted it last year. It's a climber. This is one of my Austin roses. And it's taking off. It has a very nice fragrance. You actually could smell the, 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 the gardener walking past. I think I'm going to walk through the bench, uh, to the bench, and then, and then the short buds. of... Look at the buds on the ground. That's all opportunistic growth on the part well, of... Well, I have to get around Indy. The apothecary rose likes to spread by suckers. Boing, boing, boing. Not all roses spread by suckering, but the apothecary rose most definitely does. Oh, yeah. Oh, and here's Rosie the fountain. Cushion. Boy, what a cushion. Rosie pin cushion is more like. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Do it yourself, your things. There's more of the antique rows. The, now, the red ones were the knockouts, you said? Uh, those ones are rosy cushion. Oh, rosy cushion. Most of the knockouts here actually are not doing too well. The knockouts, the only ones that really survived are in front of the yard now. They don't like the shade. The almonds trees are too shady. So, antique and rosy cushion have taken over because shade? Sure, why not? They're perfectly okay with it. Knockouts like sun. Now, what? Which one is the one with the the really long? Ow! Rosy cushion. You just oh. yourself on rosy cushion. Yeah. What is Indy doing? Oh. Being an Indy. So these would also be rosy cushion. Yes. Those are long thorns. Yes. And that's the one that turns like bright flaming scarlet when getting new growth every year. And makes let me duck under our apple tree here. Oh yeah, the apple trees really grown a lot too. And the strawberries. Yeah. You can probably get some of the almonds that are growing. Oh yes, the almonds have leaned all the way over here on the far side. The almonds are overlapping with the, uh, with the pink lady apple tree. And here we have an aggressively growing mulberry. The mulberry is going to have an amazing harvest pretty soon. It's almost entirely berries and almost no foliage this year. And what did you say the name of the uh, purple? I was told that this is Cardinal Richelieu. That said, Cardinal Richelieu is not supposed to even have a scent, and this one smells almost like myrrh. So your guess is as good as mine. And oh, that would be the prince. The prince is twice as high as was said he would ever get. The prince is generally considered a short, spindly specimen. Well, it is really spindly. Good. Not really. I mean, we're talking like legs that flop all over the place. This one likes to stand straight. Um, it's a dark one. The only times I've ever actually had to play around with supporting this one were to keep the limbs separated. I've never had to stake it up to something to keep it standing upright. 
Uh, this is another one that smells like myrrh. Easily one of my favorite roses. And there's the one that um, our youngest daughter calls Rosie. Hang on, I'm getting there. Rosie is a Zephyrian Jordan. She's lost most of her of this year's blossoms. There's a tiny bit left of this one. But she's a re -bloomer. She may end up blooming again. Oh! Buds! Buds! Okay, she's not entirely done. But last year it was like, oh, at once, boom, pink! But now she's doing it more gradually. Oh. I will need to fix the birdhouse. Yeah, I have a birdhouse to let me do it. And I have the beginnings of a uh, apple orchard here. This one is a Granny Smith. Oh, hold on. The Granny Smith here, I actually kind of escaleered it to the Rose Arbor. So, assuming I can get something stronger to stake it to and hold it that way, it's eventually going to be sort of spread eagle, which will make it easier for us to pick the fruit and easier for you to do the uh, mowing. And that one over there is a um, cinnamon apple. This one. Cinnamon spice. It's supposed to grow in the south. It was bred for extreme temperatures. So a good one, supposedly, to survive the climate change. And I can't even remember what that particular apple tree is. All I know is it's taking off. Hello, Andy. Oh, that one. Yeah. And this is Andy being Andy. Yeah. Hello, little Andy. The little rose I have trained on our service berry is um, Madame Isaac Perrier. And that was the rose that Henry grew in the sacred history. She's an old rose. She is said to smell like raspberries. I don't buy it. It smells her to me. She smells like roses. This is one of my rugosas. The pink rugosa has yet to do anything. Usually it's one of the first to bloom, but not this year. And she's probably going to fall along. And she has been. Here we have the knockouts that are actually thriving in among the uh, eglantine that came back last year. Speaking of coming back, we didn't, I don't think we got a picture of it, but Constance Spry, one of my Constance Spry's came back from the dead. We had a, we had an incident with Witch's Bloom, um, Rose Rosacea last year. Well, it's just over here. Yeah, I can walk yeah, back yeah. and go see it. Yeah, there's, there's no actual flowers, And Indy has really, moved on. really amazing. I was ecstatic when I saw this thing bounce back healthy. So, originally I'd been planning to completely uproot, shovel prune Constance Spry, both of them, because Witch's Room is notoriously contagious, it is spread by mites, it is almost unheard of for only one rose to be infected, especially when they're all growing close together, but I had no strength. It actually physically hurt me to, dig, to, to even cut down Constance, because the rose is keyed to me. And by the time I got done, I was pretty much spent. So it just sat there and sat there. And then the spring, the infected Constance never came back. It's it deader than dead. This one has been taking off. It was mowed down to the ground. It's only been about two months, and already we have foliage. I was, I was about ready to jump for joy. Oh, this is a sea foam rose, and I think it's another climber or hedge rose wouldn't surprise me given how it's like all over the place, but that's a pretty white rose. Well, we've got most of this stuff over here. And a, oh, indeed. Oh, and, and here's our, our givers from in our grape growing back as well. Oh, Gewürztraminer. Yeah, that might be. It, it, it actually has been, this is a strain that was bred specifically for Indiana. Sometimes the grapes even survive the birds. And here we have the blackouts that survived. They like it here because it's a nice sunny spot. Knockouts need sun. This is one of my Austin roses. I can't remember the name of it offhand. 
I want to say Charles Darwin, but I could be wrong. Anyway, I have two of them side by side. They are highly fragrant, which is wonderful because um, knockouts have no scent whatsoever. And we have rosebuds floating in the bird bath again. I do this every year. And the bird bath has actually been hemmed in by roses. Oh, peaches. We're going to have an amazing peach harvest this year. I think the last time we got a uh, video, the peach trees were a lot shorter than this. If you look at all the peaches that are growing right now, I think it's going to be a much better harvest than we had last year. Yeah, they've grown. Even the poor stunted one near the street has yeah. been doing a lot, a lot better than it has been. No matter what we do, it leans toward the street. It's determined to get over there where where the cars are. I admire its stubbornness. I'll let it live just for that. But for the second year in a row, not only did it flower, but it for once produced fruit. I've had this peach tree since like 2013, and it only started producing fruit a year or two ago, um, as opposed to the other trees, which have been fruiting for a while. So, oh, oh, mutant earth angel. How do you mean? Mutant. They're only supposed to be three feet high in a tiny little bush. Does this look three feet high to you? Uh, no, it's, it's <laughs> taller than you. Taking over the garden. Well, and is there a is there, is there a variation of Earth Angel that is not no. Um, dwarf? No, they, they were bred to be dwarf roses. It not fairy roses. Um, fairy roses are little tiny things that you grow in flower pots. This was supposed to be like a two or three foot tall shrub, a little tiny shrub, the kind that you use as an accent in a cottage garden. So. Now I have... It appears to have changed its mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And behind it... Uh, behind it, you can actually see the last flowers of Thérèse Brunier, who is one of the most fragrant roses in my garden. And for the past couple of years, the first to bloom. My eglantine is no longer the first to bloom. She is. Meow. I hear a meow. Oh, guess who's coming? Green puff. Meow. Wow. We see a cream puff. Wow. By the way, cream puff needs a forever home. So, if, 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 if you know anybody who can give cream puff a loving home, be my guest. Cream puff got abandoned, and we have a very jealous cat indoors who would not handle cream puff as a companion very well. Cream puff is loving, adorable and about as bright as a two-watt light bulb. Yeah, he's not real swift. He needs to be kept indoors for his own safety. So anybody giving him a home needs to make sure he does not get out. His last family abandoned him when he escaped one too many times. They were just not It's out. starting to sprinkle. Yeah, it's been starting to sprinkle for a while. I, I see the um, irises are pretty much done. We didn't have a good iris year this year. We've had better iris years. This is Keys in Georgia. She's amazing. This is the one that I keep to my uh, former girlfriend, Reggiana. And the fact that Keys in Georgia is thriving makes me feel good because it means she's doing well herself. Um, probably the peak capture. This is Constance Spry. Constance Spry does not really want to thrive, but she also refuses to die. So I thought the other one was Constance no, Spry. No, right, sorry. Um, no, this is Gertrude Jekyll. Oh, Gertrude. Oh, yeah. Another absurdly thorny rose that's key to me. I've got the, two of them. The bees are feeding in the rain. They like it so much. Yeah. Well, they didn't. The they bees. don't even stop for the rain. Well, they're they're fat, fat, too. Yes, they're very fat. And we have the fattest bees. This Rugosa took five years to produce flowers. Five years. It's beautiful, pure white, and it's done blooming, so you can't really see how glaringly white it is. You have to take the word for it. This is another one of my um, Zephyrine Green. I have three. That one, the one that grows up 
against the mulberry tree that um, my youngest daughter nicknamed Rosie, and the one that's mowed down to the ground because she was growing next to Constance Spry. And I was afraid she might have been exposed, and you're going to get the bee. That's a great Oh, I'm trying to get the bee. Happy bee. Very happy bee. Very heavy bee. Do you see how far oh it's bending the plants that when it lands? Big as my thumb. This is uh, Julia Child. She smells kind of like licorice. She's one of the more unusually scented roses. I'm going to have to start covering my phone. It's getting wet. Oh, dear. And Indy does not care that it is raining. And did very you, often doesn't. Did you want to pause the video and go grab the... Um... Umbrella? Yeah. Um, I can finish it up. We won't want to take too long, though. I'm trying not to. So this is Spite. 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 Yes, one of Spites has bloomed. Um, also known as New Dawn. I called her Spite because she was buried completely and utterly by the comfrey last year, and I didn't think she had even survived. She was rather sickly when I planted her. And then suddenly I found a cane by accident, the usual way one finds rose canes by accident. And after I pulled all the thorns out of my hands, I saw that she was doing wonderfully. And she seemed to have a very um, spiteful attitude about the whole thing. It's like, I'm going to live whether you want me to or not. So she is named Spite and she is thriving. She likes it there. Now I've noticed a little red bud down there. Which one is that? Um, why, uh, no, it's not wild desert, is it? No, that's uh, Noble Anthony. Oh. Noble Anthony is uh, not exactly thriving, but he's another one that's just not dying either. Now, that stump over there, was, is oh. that what's left of Munstead Wood? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I need to get another Munstead Wood. That was one of my favorite roses. For whatever reason, Munson Wood was doing great last year, and then suddenly this spring he wasn't. Gooseberries! We're going to have a gooseberry harvest this year. Indeed. Quite a few of them. And the screaming red rose right there is Deep's, um, Deep Secret? Dark Secret? Anyway, that's the one I'm growing for a friend of mine named Raven. And... This rose loves abuse, I have to say. Stake it down? Sure. Oh, that's only going to last another day. Peonies don't last. This was a bud when we left for uh, Cyprus. When we got back, she's already almost completely full blown. This one was blooming. The bloom is already spent. It's only been two days. They don't last. Peonies are short lived. It's like one or two days, and boom, they're done. I think I know daylilies when I see them. Those are a different kind of lily. Those are Asiatic oh. lilies. Oh, those are Asiatic. Oh, We well. have one daylily. It's blooming underneath Teasing Georgia. And what were the purple things again? Those are palm free. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. The stuff the bees love. The bumpy well, they get around, so I wasn't sure. And comfrey is very invasive, so if, if, if anybody can't grow comfrey, they will Gooseberries! Oh, we're going to have such a huge gooseberry. And house. cream puff. Look how much bigger our, 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 uh, our little dinosaur tree is. That's a nice specimen of a ginkgo. Another 10 years, it might even be tree-sized, but not a very large tree. Almost shoulder height. It's getting there. It was like two feet high the last time we took a video. It's not a big tree. <clears throat> it's It's small. And here are our dangerous strawberries. The reason I say they are dangerous is because their uh, companion is aconite. So you have to be very brave to pick these strawberries. And what is little Indy doing? She was nibbling something. Probably looking for the last of the um, catnip. Oh, it's going probably. To down to the ground. None of the foxglove came up this year. I was a little disappointed about that. But the poison hemlock is magnificent now. That is an absolutely lovely specimen. Look at those, the, the, the mottled stems. That's one way you can tell it's poison hemlock. 
Um, isn't that one of the ones we're not supposed to touch, or is that one of the other ones? That's one of the other ones. You can oh. touch this. You know, I mean, oh, you might okay. want to wash your hands afterward, but it's not going to instantly make you woozy. Just don't eat it. But the umbrals right here look an awful lot like, um... Queen Anne's lace? Hogweed. Hogweed. Oh. See, um, they're separated. Queen Anne's lace is like one big umbral. These are separated. But hogweed does not have the mottled stems. Oh, okay. So this is how we know that we're not growing hogweed. Right. Hogweed. Because growing make... hogweed would be bad. Well, actually, I mean, neither is ideal if you don't want... Hogweed has a, like, 50-50 uh, chance of making you break out into blisters uh, within 48 hours of sunlight exposure. But other than that, you're okay. Hemlock, you can touch all you want, but I don't recommend eating it because it's poisonous, so... Now, the one that you both can't eat and can't touch is the aconite. Wasn't it Socrates that found out about hemlock firsthand? Uh, he already knew about it. it he, he chose it over uh, more undignified forms of death. And here we have the beginnings of a rather large harvest of raspberries and a rather hard, large harvest of blueberries. The berries are going bonkers this year, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Right they are kind of taking berries. over, yeah. There is a white rose blooming over there. Not Winchester Cathedral, a different one. I just can't remember which one it was. And it's starting to pick up again. I think we'll need and to call this a video. Yeah. Well, at least the holly on the left and the pine tree on the right are still doing the well. The pine tree full of blackberries. And then there's the raspberry patch, so we can get that real quick before we're done. Yeah, I'm kind of walking along past it. Okay. And I think we can call that a video. Yeah, maybe we can go 